Hi guys. I am here with your Bible reading for today. Happy Sunday, everyone. Hope you guys have had a blessed weekend. We are going to begin today where we left off yesterday with Luke chapter 1, verses 57 through 80. And you'll be seeing the birth of John the Baptist, Zachariah's song, because of course, you know, when John was born, Zachariah would get his voice back. Because remember, God took his voice because um, he didn't believe it when he said that um, Elizabeth was going to have a baby. So he made him mute until John was born. So let's get into let's get into this. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to his to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father Zachariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. John the Baptist, someone very special indeed. He would bring many people to the Lord. He even baptized Jesus himself. Let's hear Zechariah's song. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. When it says that, um, when Zechariah says about John, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, that means he's going on before Jesus comes, because you know Mary was pregnant with Jesus, and Jesus is Lord. So John the Baptist is born, was born first to go ahead of Jesus to get people prepared to tell them the kingdom of the Lord is at hand and to save many people so that he, he, he prepared the way for Jesus to come to let them know that the Lord was coming. And you'll see that when we get into Jesus being born in, in Luke. So that's where we'll stop with Luke for today. And today we're going to read Psalm 58 for the director of music to the tune of Do Not Destroy of David, a victim. 
Do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge people with equality? No. In your heart you devise injustice, and in your hands mete out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged. When they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked, then people will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. And that was Psalm 58. There is got on ID channel. It's watching that case that was on there. It's really sad. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 12 and 13 today. Proverbs 11:12 says, Whoever derides their neighbor has no sense, but the one who has understanding holds their tongue. If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Do not talk bad to your neighbors. Don't tell them what they should do. You know, let them don't try to run their lives for them. If you can help lead them on the right path, great. But if you just want to talk bad about them, don't do it. Just If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. And Proverbs chapter 11, 13 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. How many fights are started by someone saying, by gossip, by someone saying, this person said this about that person, and then that person goes and tells that person that this person says, you said, they said this about you, and this person's like, in keeping with the secret also, I'll tell you this, but don't tell nobody else. Well, then they go and tell somebody, and they say, well, don't tell nobody else, but so-and-so told me. And then they go on and on and on and on, and finally it gets back to the person that the secret was supposed to be kept from to begin with. Gossip, God doesn't like gossip. And I know we all gossip. I gossip. I mean, I don't talk... <laughs> we all gossip. We all judge people even though we're not supposed to I say things I gossip with my aunt on the phone about um, certain people in my family that do bad things that I wish they wouldn't do and God doesn't like that I need to I try I'm getting better at that I'm getting better at not doing that I'm trying just to sort of avoid, avoid that altogether um, and that's what God wants. God doesn't like a gossip, and I do not. And we all we are we are all guilty of that, whether you want to admit to it or not. You know, you know, we're all guilty of gossiping. And yes, yeah, so I try not to talk about anybody badly, anyways.
or start trouble, you know. Like, don't tell this person this about so-and-so. Somebody tells me to keep a secret now. I keep a secret. Because some people are just looking for fights to start. And that's what they... Sadly, it's what some evil people live for, is to... For gossip and to start start drama and start fights with other people. I I don't I'm not guilty of that. I do not like to do that. I want to stay as far away from drama as possible. But I guess if you're talking about talking about family to other family and um, what they do and what they don't do, you know I guess it's all considered gossip. So that's why I say we all do it because I'm guilty of that as well. But, like, you know, we all need to get better at it. Let's just say that. Let's just end there. We all need to get better at it. We never want to hurt anyone. I, I never try to hurt anyone. Um, I would rather talk bad about myself before I'd want to talk bad about somebody else to hurt them to someone. But, I mean, sometimes it's like if you're gossiping, but it's the truth, you know? Because I don't lie when, I, when I'm when i talking to my uh, family about other family that's bothering me or bothering the ones I love. It's not like I make up lies. I just tell the truth of what they're doing. So, I don't understand if that's just like communication or that's considered gossip as well I would I would say it's considered gossip but it's like if we don't if we don't do that what are we supposed to talk about to, with each other of course there's many things we could talk about but it's just in people's nature naturally that when you when you grow up around it all your life around everybody's ends up talking about each other you know, gossiping whether it's good or bad about somebody. So we all we all need to, we all need to work on that, um, myself included. All right, guys, that was today's Bible reading. Um, I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Um, let's all think about the gossiping thing. Because we all need to work on it. I try to work on it every day to try to, you know, if I'm going to say something about somebody, I want it to be nice. So, let's just work on that for today's, for today's thing. Let's, for our Sunday, um... For a Sunday workshop for today, or whatever you want to call it, for our Good Deed Sunday, let's work on working on less gossiping. How about that? Let's make it our Good Deed Sunday to work on gossip. And we'll see next week um, if we got any better. How about that? Now, guys, I'll let you guys know Sunday if I remember how I do. If I remember to tell you guys next Sunday how I do with it. But with my mind, I'll probably forget, but I'll try to remember to tell you guys. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Bible reading. I hope you've had a blessed weekend. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.